Courtesy of Jason and Vito here, two developers on Don't Starve Together themselves, Clay Entertainment has made good on their promise and have given us our first insight into an update before the update is in our hands. March will see 2024's initial dive into quality of life releases, but trust me when I say that it is far, far more than that. Out in beta next week, this drop of content is apparently introducing entirely new story arcs to the Nightmare Werepig of all things, a Wagstaff side to compete with the shadowy chains in the caves essentially. Junkyards will be freshly added set pieces to every single world, straight from the start I might add, and will be filled with scrap piles, the scrappy werepig boss fight itself, complete with all sorts of gadgets as you can see, blueprints for scrapped loot itself, and a wobot here. No, this is not a mod. This is a legit companion that's soon to be available, and it's one that will even do some cleanup work for us at that. And we'll just have to wait and see how it all feels and plays out soon enough. As for now, well, let us enter more familiar territory, as Clay has revealed that three skill trees will also be seeing changes too. Wormwood is getting most of that, it seems, with photosynthesis and fertilization buffs. Light bugs and salamander skills will just get better the more we actually spawn from here on out. Their sleep skill will be sped up to make everything more efficient and safe. And finally, the Bramble Husk Armor will also become a Planar now with the right affinities in play. But that's not all, folks. Willows will see their affinities tweaked too. Shadow Tendrils will all target one hostile as best they can and receive a damage boost while they're at it, while Lunar Flames will also allow us to move and aim at the same time, which is a huge deal. But finally, Bernie will regen health at a faster rate moving forward, and that actually might be kind of nice. Wigfrids will also get a couple tweaks as well, but we'll mention that little stuff at the end as I actually want to talk about the weather. And no, I'm not talking how Chicago went from 74 degrees to snowing in mere hours the other day, but rather how weather itself will start meaning more and more in the constant. As you just saw, slipping mechanics are coming to winter as a whole overall via ponds and pango colonies. However, acid rain and lunar hail will also impact a ton more in the caves too. Mush trees will spoil. Bats will apparently swarm us for night or now, whatever that means. Rock lobsters and clockworks will be debuffed. And lunar hail apparently makes dust. Not bad. Just very late game, so we'll have to see. And that is actually how we end our day today. Two additional late game entries in the big chests and embalming sprays. Now, I'm not exactly sure how quote unquote late game the former is, as Clay didn't exactly say what we will be needing to help upgrade pre-existing chests to this, but I do know that said chests are going to offer infinite stacks from here on out. And no, you didn't hear me wrong. We have the same number of slots, sure, but each slot now holds an infinite number of whatever we are storing, so have fun. And finally, this embalming fluid will seemingly cause some pure horror and will essentially lock a plant resource in its current state forever, meaning that trees will not grow or shrink, bushes will not be able to be harvested, etc, etc. Interesting, but not really for anyone but megabases, really. Which is fine, by the way. I'm not here to diss megabasing. I used to do it too. But my concern is... This is a quality of life update. Some of the best things Clay has ever done in the past. Just not really feeling like the one they should have done to start 2024. But I'll elaborate on that before Julian, so I'm not going to leave you hanging. But let me give you some other tidbits that I heard very, very briefly. And you probably missed it if you watched the little live stream. Skill trees themselves are apparently going to take a less time to gain full insight now. Don't have a timer on that, but... That's pretty huge. Totally forgot that I have footage of these two things and I edited them into the video, but didn't actually include them. There's two new Moonshrewn crafts. One is like a monster meat bait that will put anything to sleep almost instantly. And the other is a fun cap that is made from Moonshrooms that will drop all the, you know, lunar spores that explode. So I kind of like that, but kind of don't. And the inclusion of both those things it's also kind of a concern of mine, which I'll talk about. The Wigford tweaks I alluded to aren't actually skill tree related, I don't think, as they just said that her battle stingers are going to have a better cooldown and that her startling soliloquy effect is going to last longer. 
both of those things straight up buffs to two really strong things. And lastly, just some final bullet points that I pulled from all this myself. Moonstorms are gonna be changed and like majorly changed. Apparently we'll only need one restrained static for the Lunar Siphonator to spawn the Celestial Champion. And you might be thinking, hold up, what are they gonna replace everything with? Well, that's because they're gonna make scrap the new material we need to progress the Celestial Champion thing. So they changed that entire progression which is kind of nuts. Again, this is a quality of life update we're talking about. Apparently, Wagstaff's not going to move that much anymore. There's going to be a performance boost overall for the game. All right. Rot is going to wash away in rain now. Uh, the Celestial Orb, the RNG of it, should be far more consistent. They didn't say how or why and all that, but they just said that, so that's good. And then this is an interesting one. If you have the fossils needed to build the proper reanimated skeleton stuff in the uh, atrium, it will just do it automatically. Like if you have the key, you have the heart, it sounds like if you have the fossils, you just have to place it and it will just make it. All interesting stuff. I'm not gonna sit here and question every inch of this thing. I don't have it in my hands, first of all, so I can't really do such a thing. However, I think I can still be concerned about how all over the place it sounds and feels. Like I get it, quality of life updates, typically do that. They touch up on all sorts of things, right? But you know what made all of those so good? They went back to early to mid game stuff and gave it all the boost it needed. This is just adding more late game stuff. And uh, isn't that kind of the same problem we've been having lately? But again, I don't want to sit here and question everything. I do like how weather is going to be playing more of an impact. I hope they do more of that. But with like the basic weather, not post rift super late game weather only right that's my concern that's what i'm going with i hope you guys understand thanks for watching this update next week probably thursday i don't know clay nowadays this year who knows what they're gonna do but i will be there to cover it this is just a tease of it and honestly it's a pretty big freaking tease so enjoy it this uh stream is also available to watch if you want to go frame by frame see what's happening it's there for you on their twitch channel maybe i'll leave a link down below but again Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Thanks for being patient. Uh, moving forward, again, I'm going to be really only covering updates, and if I have some fun with them, I'll make more videos that way. I just wanted to leave that here because I know a lot of people have probably been wondering, holy moly, what happened? You used to do daily uploads. Yeah, it's not going to happen anymore, everyone. Times have changed. But I'll see you in the next one anyway. Bye-bye.